Hiya folks, I'm in the dressing room of our bedroom at the moment. This broke, I would like to say months ago, probably a couple of years ago now, and I've never got around to fixing it. Now it's time to start doing all these little jobs uh, that I've got to do outstanding, so I thought you might as well come along for the ride. See you in a minute. Right, well as you can see, the hanger come down on this dressing room. We don't really use this room for anything in specific, although it is a dressing room. But uh, we have got an exercise machine here, one of those stepper uh, machines. You probably can't see that, it's out of shot. Over here, as you can see, I've moved it away because it's normally under the window there. So uh, that's why that's sitting here at the moment. So let's get ahead, drill a couple of holes here, get some uh, raw plugs in the holes and fix that curtain rail back. Right, I think this room needs a bit of an extra paint out as well there. Um, Oh, look at that, look, it's just balancing on the, on the centre one. So let's just get that in there. Yeah, we will be giving this room a bit of a paint out, so I'm not too worried about it on the wall there, like that. Let's just have a little look where we are. Now these were tiny screws that was in there originally, so I've gone for a bit more beefier screw, so I'm just gonna drill these original raw plugs out. Which they are quite... Oh, I'll put that on the hammer. Well, I've gone for screws that are a lot more beefier because we actually, I've got a cord on here you pull these curtains open and shut with, and obviously that's what's caused the issue here. So I'll just tap that into the hole. There we go. Simple little job, I should have done it a long time ago, but you know what it's like, because we're never in this room. Well, I can tell already that this ain't gonna come down. A lot of people say, oh, why don't you get one of those screwdrivers that whack them in the wall? Well, when you're going into raw plugs and fixings like that, it's very easy to strip a plastic raw plug out, so I tend to like the, the, doing it by feel, so I know that it's not gonna come down again. And I know that by feeling that, that that's not gonna come down again. Oh no, here we go, it can go up. There we go, there we go, there we go, look at that. Now that ain't coming down, I know that much. I'll just put the other end in. Go over here, just check this ends in. I think this ends sticking out, you see. In fact, these you could probably do with better ones, but there's no pulling down on this side, you see. There's no cables. And that's that, I think that's it. Let's get out of the way. Oh, let's come down now, look at the corner clips. Oh, here we go. Oh, there's something in there. Hang these clips up on these hooks here. Okay, that's that. Okay, that's it. All right, let's get that out of the way. And now we should <laughs> be able to open the curtains again. That's all Jimmy's rubbish out there. Look, from his unit, which we've got to probably burn. So, there we go. Happy days. Now, how long did that take? That didn't take me long, did it? She don't know I've done that today, but uh, I've started. <clears throat> right, okay. So, I'm in the ensuite at the moment, and... Uh, we got trouble with these taps, they've corroded so badly, we've got very hard water around here that they've all corroded up and stuff like that and it's very hard to turn them off and turn them on. So um, I've got some cheap ones, this has all got to be replaced at some stage, this is one of those Whirlpool baths, we don't really use it. So, um, yeah, But for the moment we're just going to replace these taps so that we can use this properly. I did get a cheap pair from B&Q yesterday for 20 quid, so just remove this bath panel here. Should be simple, yep. Yeah. I'll put this fixed at the bottom, innit? Yeah, it's gonna be in it. Yeah, there's a screw in there. Always isn't there. As I say, it's a very old system, this, and uh, it could do with replacing. It's been in here since we've lived in the house, and it's uh, 19 years now, or 20 years coming up this year. Okay, that's one out. Would be one on the other end and all, wouldn't there? Bear with me. Right, okay. No doubt behind here is where all the big spiders live. <laughs> uh, can't see any at the minute, but we have seen them go down the side there many a time. Let's put that down there, put them two little screws on the shelf. Right. Ah, oh, okay, I thought they was half inch pipes. They're 15 mil that supply this, and no doubt there's no valves there either. As you can probably see, that one's a 15 mil, I think the other one might be half inch though. 
Yeah, the one at the back there is half inch or 22 mil. So that one's 15 mil and the other one's 22 mil. Very hard to get to. Oh, and as I say, there's no valves in situ either. I can isolate the hot tap from the airing cupboard and uh, the cold tap probably comes from the water tank. Right, I've managed to find the hot tap, uh, sorry, the cold tap feed and I've got that valve fully open now as you can probably see, there's no water coming out there. And let's just show you what I'm up against down here. Right, okay. Here's our cold pipe in, as you can probably see, this one I've just turned off. No valve on that, I'm gonna have to cut that probably somewhere here. I did, I'd want an inline valve, one with a little screwdriver slot, but I've just found that up in the loft and I thought, well, well I've got it, I might as well use it. So I can whack that, hopefully, in there like that. But the main problem is the one at the back there, which is the hot water tap, I've got no access to whatsoever. What they probably did, they probably tightened up these unions first with a bit of pipe in there and dropped the bath in place and then just soldered that joint up down there while the bath was in situ. That's what I suggest they've done there. Never easy to get into this situation. Don't forget I've got to get uh, another valve in that hot pipe there as well. I'm not too sure where that valved off at the moment. I've been up in the loft and I can't see the um, hot water feed coming out of the top of the water tank in the airing cupboard. So I'm going to have to play this one by ear for the moment. And uh, I thought if I get this one out of the way first, that gives me more room to do that one. So now that I've found this one, cut this one off, get this out of the way and I can then work on that one. That's the one I want to do first, the one at the back. And like everything, normally you use a tap spanner to undo these top uh, nuts there. I have had one, I don't know where it's gone, I've had a look for it for about 20 minutes, I can't find it. So again, you've got to make do with what you've got, I've got a pair of grips there, maybe I can get on them, just unscrew them, but uh, ideally you want a long tap spanner to go in there. So uh, I've got to make do with what I have. So initially, I've got to cut this pipe, get that out of the way, and I'll probably say about there, so if I, I don't want to cut it too far on the bend there, because it's rippled there where they've done the bend, so you go before that. So I'm looking at probably cutting it in about there. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of water come out of here, I know. Ideally I want these um, pipe cutters which you just slide, slide over the pipe, but I haven't got one for 15 mil. Well, I did have, but I don't know where it's gone again, so I'm just gonna to have to try and hack through here. Oh, look at these shit blades, look, hold on. Bear with me, I'm gonna go and get a new blade on this. Oh, it working under sinks and basins and things like that. Right, new blade, here we go. And we're gonna get a little drop of water come out of here, but that should be only from the tap. Right, there we go, that's through there. Now what we've got to try and do is to get that turn, let's get that down there, bloody thing keep popping up, is to undo this nut up on the top there. I've got these five holes, pipe wrenches as people call them. And we've got to undo this. I've got no, I can't grip you see, because I can't get my hands in it. Oh, we're getting a bit of turn on there. Well, these, if I can get that on there, maybe turn the taps, you see. Right, so I'll go down there like that. And maybe I'll just, once you break the seal, that's it. And get a pair of grips on the top to turn the tap. So bear with me on this one. Ah, oh, there we go. Just crack the tap then, I think. Crack the joint on the tap. Once we've done that, we can uh, hopefully undo it. Alright, so hopefully I should be able to just turn that bit of pipe off. I want to keep that bit of pipe, obviously, because uh, we're going to need that for the top part. There we go, that was only just on there, look. And that's a tap connector there, as you can probably see. That's out the way. And now I should be able to just... Undo that plastic nut. Just like that. Come over to the top and 
Hey presto. You can see how bad they were. Look, let's get them under the light there, look. How corroded they was. But the reason why I haven't changed these before is because it's so awkward as you've just blinking seen there. That's the easy one out of the way. Right, so I won't bore you with getting the other one out. It's gonna be pretty much the same. Although this one, I haven't found the valve for at the moment, but uh, I'll get over that. And uh, then we'll get on to installing them. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay, I'm uh, out here in the hallway. This is the immersion heater on this type of system. It's an old system. It's got the old cold water feed tank in the roof. It's not a combination boiler, anything like that. But what happens is, there's the bottom of the tank there. You always fill a tank at the bottom. So any cold water feed to this tank comes in from the bottom there. That terminal there, that pipe coming in there, it's got a coil going all the way around and it comes out and goes back out there and back up and that goes to the boiler. So the hot water in here is a sealed system. Inside the water jacket, there's a big copper coil, comes out there and goes to and from the boiler. So that's how that works. Cold water comes in at the bottom of the tank, always at the bottom of the tank from the cold water storage tank up in the loft. And the hot water, if you can probably see there, comes out of that top pipe and then goes and gets distributed around the house to your hot taps everywhere. But as you can see, there's no hot valve, there's no valve in there. So I can't actually turn that off. If I could have just turned that off, the hot water would have stopped coming out of the taps. So the next stage is to go up into the roof and look where the water tank is. Uh, and coming out of the water tank, the one that comes out down to feed this, would be to turn that valve off. Well, there's no valve there either. So we've got a hole full of tank of water, which when you turn the hot tap on, the water starts to drop down into the water tank, the ball valve drops down and lets more water in. So it's a continuous cycle. So the only other way I could do it was to tie the ball valve up, hold it up physically, so that when the tank empties, once I drain the water off of this by leaving the taps on, which is what I'm doing now, look, as you can see there, once that stops running, that means the cold water pipe that feeds it has got no more water coming into it because I've tied the ball valve up and that means the tank's emptied upstairs. And also that means, because there's no pressure pushing the water up in the tank and pushing it out and up via the outlet there at the top, because hot water outlets are always on the top of the tank because as I just said to you, heat rises, hot water rises to the top of the cylinder. And that's the reason why that'll always be the output of the tank. This is what happens when you've got no valves. So coming up to the loft here, you can see that tank, what I was telling you about, the hot water, uh, the, sorry, the cold water storage tank, which feeds all your taps in the hot water cylinder. The one next to it is for the central heating. That's the little makeup tank for the central heating and the central heating only. This one here, now, as you can see, I've had to tie the ball valve up and the tank's getting really low now, as you can probably see. I can't see, hold on. <laughs> yeah, we're nearly there now. And if I didn't tie that ball valve up, that tank would be continually filling and uh, we'd never turn the supply off. So I physically had to hold that ball valve up with a bit of wire there and just put a bit of support over the top there so the ball valve don't drop and start filling. And as I say, this goes right down into the airing cupboard, into where it picks up a supply and there's no valves on it whatsoever. Happy days. So just coming out of the loft, coming around here now, as you can see, we're down to a trickle now. And uh, just let that finish off. It's only the residual water in the pipes anyway, so I'm not worried about that. And that basically means that water cylinder's probably still full, but there's no pressure now pushing down that pipe into there to push water out. So there's no water pressure because you rely on that water tank, which is up in the loft, that pressure of the water or the weight of it pushing down to push the water out and through around your house. Modern systems are pretty much different than this. Uh, this is an old system, as I say to you, so uh, you've probably got a different system, but this is old buildings, old technology. Right, okay, so coming back in here, I should be able to turn this hot tap on now. Just let that residual water run out of the pipe, and that should be it now. Now, don't forget, the only reason we've had to do it this way is because there's no valves at all in the lines. Whoever installed this was a rubbish plumber and I just haven't put any valves in. So I've got the situation now where that's basically empty. What I've got to do now is to um, cut that pipe, get that tap out, and then we can start the installation. I may go down the road and buy an inline valve for the hot tap, just to be easier to install back there so you can operate it with a screwdriver. 
And that's where we are at the moment, so I'll see you in a minute. I've got you looking up. See you later. Yeah. All right, these are the taps that I've got. Uh, only cheap ones from b and I wasn't going to spend a lot of money on them. I don't like this bit, but uh, there you go. And as you can see, they've got the same length of shaft on them. Uh, there, so we shouldn't have a problem matching up. And it's the same threads, obviously. And I've just bought, been down the road, and I've got one of our 22mm inline valves there, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to use that gate valve. I'm not going to spend them any money. I don't need to spend. But look at the size. You've got 22mm pipe. Look at the small hole they give you through the middle. Look. You'd think that would be similar to the bore of the pipe, wouldn't you? There you go. So that's that. And I've just gone down and bought this adjustable uh, basin wrench there. As you can see, that enables you to um, tighten up. Where's that go around there? should go sideways. It's a bit tight, isn't it? Oh, it's not going to fit, is it? <laughs> oh, I've got the wrong size, look. Oh, lovely. Don't you love it, don't you? That's, a, that's for a basin, not a bath tap. Oh, God. Oh well, I've got one of them now. I'll have to struggle, and if not, I'll have to get a bigger one. Never mind. Bought the wrong one. I'm going to use that. I'm going to need that anyway. I just realised because I've got my basin to do as well. This hot water's not coming out of that tap. It's fully corroded up. Right, let's get under the sink then and cut off this pipe. And uh, I'll use a special tool for that. All right, I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see. This is the uh, pipe cutter I've got here for the 22 mil pipe. I did have one for the 15 mil, but it's uh, disappeared. So all I've got to decide, if I can get in here bloody, I've got my toilets right behind me as well, so I've got no room whatsoever here. It's where that valve's gonna go. Probably put it lower rather than higher. And then decide where to put the tool. So I'm gonna probably put it back there somewhere. And these, I've got a directional arrow on the rotation. And uh, you've got to turn it the way it says. It's telling me that way, so I'm just gonna line that wheel up there that cutting wheel up with that mark i've just made on that pipe and these are designed as i said to you for uh tight areas like this and that goes in there like that if i push that on there and then start to rotate it can you see that it will start to cut through that pipe without any sawing action whatsoever there we go to cut through it once it's cut through it you'll get a bit of water run out there obviously but we know that uh, we're through that's it just push it off and we're through that pipe fully there and i'm sure you'll agree that's a lot easier than doing it the other way we're sawing it and the ends are normally nice and ready to accept the valve so i'm just gonna undo that top clamp there you haven't got to see that and get that pipe out and then we'll take it from there right okay one other thing you've got to remember as well is when you've got these tap connectors they have got a fiber washer in there these were seized up as you can probably see there look these are well manky so do replace these because as you're dealing with a very tight situation under there you don't want to go through all the hassle of tightening them up and finding that you haven't changed the washer so all that's got to be cleaned off and a new fiber washer put on that so that's that, I'll do that with the other one as well. And also, where you've actually taken the pipe out of now, you're gonna be putting this valve in line. So basically, you can see the, sh if you look through here, you probably can't see it, but in there, I know that the shoulder of the pipe will fit. And that's the line there, on there, where the pipe sits down to. So yeah, so I've got to measure that, and then take that off of this pipe, and that means that this valve can then sit in there nicely and that will sit on that pipe and everything will be at the right height so that's what you've got to do as well okay well i've cut down my copper pipes now you probably can't see that but they was a bit longer obviously to allow for the valve to go in they are marked where they go in one way as you can see the direction arrow there so that's going to be facing up like that this is the bit going in the top so that will be going in there like that and i'm actually going to tighten this up and cramp this onto the pipe now to save me having to tighten it up when I get in there. So if I do this one first, I'm only left with doing up this bottom one there and this one at the top there, which is uh, obviously gonna be the most awkward one. So I'm just gonna tighten this up now onto that pipe and then I can install that pipe, just sit it in place and then tighten up this. I've replaced and cleaned all the top of the washers there. I haven't got any fiber washers. I'm gonna use these O-rings there. That should do the job good enough. So that's what I'm gonna use. They're moving freely, which they wasn't before. Just makes your life easier when you tighten it up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, 
What a pain that was to get in. You wouldn't believe the trouble I've had. I had to take the overflow out to give me a bit more room to access the small inch millimeter by millimeter uh, doing it up. But uh, as you can see, the tap's in now. That's so much better than what we had before, I tell you. So that's in, let me show you the actual finished job under there for that tap. And there we go, the valve is in, as you can see. It's uh, easy to get to, I can just put a screwdriver in that little hole there and tighten it up, and as you can see, the job's lovely and finished. Now, why they didn't do that in the first place, I just don't know. It makes life so much easier when changing things like taps, and I wouldn't have had all the hassle of having to install and try and tighten up that bottom pipe, uh, which was the hassle, because uh, you've got to tighten that one up pretty tight. The top one's okay, it's just sealing on the rubber ring, so, you know, if you had a proper taps plan, you'd be able to tighten that one up easy, but I'm sure you'll see the limited space I was working in there, and, uh, and I'm sure you can see also that there's no leaks in there whatsoever. So I'm really happy with that now. I've just got this one to finish off. I don't think you really need to see that, to be honest with you. It's going to be a lot more easier because I've got more access here, as you can see. Look, I've got a wider swing here, which I didn't have there. So I'm going to probably leave the video here now. Because I'm, again, totally happy with that now. That was the most difficult one. I had to get that one done first. So I hope to be getting back onto doing cars definitely very, very soon. As I say, these are jobs I've had hanging out for ages. We've still got the garden fence to finish off, as you probably know. Uh, I've got to start ripping up all the decking for uh, the log cabin in front of the log cabin, as you know, it's all sunk and broken there, as well as doing other jobs, as well as doing my restoration jobs as well. Very, very busy, and um, I'll try and keep you informed as much as possible. Thanks very much for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed this little tinkering about video, which has been a bit of a pain for me, but there you go. I just thought I'd show you other things I have to get up to. I don't normally film this sort of stuff, but this is what else goes on in my life as well. Thanks very much. See you in the next video, and until then, bye for now.